Okay, so in this video I'm going to go over a few Atwood problem questions. And for my students, those would be uh, textbook questions 21, 22, and 23 uh, that were assigned to you. So I'm going to get started and present the information that's in this question. So we know that one of the masses is 45 kilograms. So I've called that M1. The other mass, we actually don't know that. So that's a bit of a challenge. It's different than other Atwood questions that we've, uh, that we've looked at. Uh, what they do give us, though, which we don't usually get, they give us the tension in the rope. And the tension is 512 newtons, but it's also on this side would be 512 newtons. Both of them always, as always, tension is directed up the rope and towards the pulley. So the forces that we know that are at play on this pulley, there's also, there's an FG1 and there's an FG2. Now we can calculate FG1 because it's just mass one times gravity. So that's 45 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And so that gives us 441.45 newtons. Now FG2 we can't get because we don't know M2 yet. So what I'm going to write down is I'm going to write down a formula with F net that involves tension. And the formula for F net that involves tension, remember, uh, means that we're only dealing with one side of the pulley at a time. We're just going to look at these forces here. Okay, so my F net then for the left side is going to be only two forces that are fighting each other. FG1 and tension. And now I want to think of directions. When we think of directions, remember anything that tries to make this pulley go in a clockwise direction is positive. Anything that tries to make it go in a counterclockwise direction would be negative. And that's how we assign directions in pulley questions. So if I try to assign that direction, this tension that's going up is trying to make that pulley turn in a clockwise direction. So tension is a positive force. FG1 is downward, which is trying to make that pulley go in an opposite direction, downward. So this FG1 is a negative. So this is a negative, and that's a positive in my formula. So now I'll go to my F net again and say that F net is equal to M1G, so now this is negative 441.45 plus 512. Those are both newtons. So that F net comes out to 70.55 newtons. And as we know, F net equals MA. And I can write only M1 times A. And the reason I can write that is because we are looking with a tension formula only at the left-hand side. So there's only one mass in this red box. So it's only M1 that we deal with. So the acceleration is going to be 70.55 Newtons divide by M1, which is 45 kilograms. And when we divide that out, we get a positive 1.57 meters per second squared. And since it's positive, that is clockwise. Okay, so now we're going to shift focus to solve for what the mass 2 is. We're going to drag this box over and just focus on the right hand side instead. Because now that we know this acceleration, that's the acceleration that we can use on this side now and say that acceleration is 1.57 meters per second squared clockwise. So that's true for the other mass for M2. So now, using the tension formula and only the right-hand side, I'm going to write a new F-net formula. 
So now I'm going to have that F net is on this side, it's FG2 and tension. But now I have to think about my directions. On this side, tension's pointing up towards the pulley, which means it's trying to make the pulley turn negative. So tension on this side is a negative force. FG2 is down, but that's trying to make the pulley turn in the positive direction. So FG2 is a positive. And my F net is, of course, going to be in the positive direction because the acceleration is. So again, I can't work out FG2, so I'm going to write down the formulas for F net. F net equals M2 times A. FG2 is M2 times G. And my tension is a negative 512. So I've got M2 times 1.57 equals m2 times 9.81 subtract 512. So now I don't know what m2 is, but I'm going to take the both things that have m2 to the other side. m2 1.57 whoops minus M2, 9.81, I changed the sign because I took it across the equal sign. Okay, I'm going to now common factor the M2 out of both of these terms. And you have 1.57 subtract 9.81. It's going to equal negative 512. So if I subtract the 1.57 and the 9.81, I get negative 8.24. So M2 times negative 8.24. And these are accelerations, so they're meters per second squared. And is equal to negative 512 newtons. Bring that down and divide. And you have negative 512 over negative 8.24 oops, kilograms. And newtons divided by kilograms gives meters per, uh, sorry, yeah, newtons divide. That's not kilograms, that's meters per second squared. I was getting ahead of myself because I knew newtons over meters per second squared was going to give kilograms. And we divide those two numbers, we get 62 kilograms. So 62 kilograms is what mass 2 comes out to, and the acceleration for both of them was 1.57 meters per second squared. Let's take a look at the next question. If I can get it to go over. There, nope, let's try again. 22. So the second question has a 3 kilogram counterweight, so that's this mass right here is 3 kilograms. attached to a window, which is the other mass. And the other mass is 4.5 kilograms. So we have these two masses set up, 4.5 and 3. So let's call this one M1. Let's call this one M2. So we want to know now, it's telling us that the window is going to open with an acceleration of 0.25 meters per second squared. According to this picture, opening window means it's moving up this way. So the acceleration is going to be 0.25 meters per second squared. And the question wants to know how much force do you have to push with to make that happen? So in this question, there's an FA. And I think it's implied that it's up. There haven't been too many windows I've found that you pull down on them to make it go up. You're going to be pushing up on the window uh, to get that thing moving. So, how are we going to figure out what's going on here? Let's again draw our forces. On the pulley, we have FG1 down this way, and we have FG2 
down that way. So one of those is going to be, if I can keep it on there, M1, so 3 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And the other one's going to be 4.5 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. So the 3 kilograms times 9.81 is 44 point, or sorry, is uh, 29.43 newtons. The 4.5 times 9.81 is 44.145 newtons. So we've got those two weights figured out. And even though they're both down, we know they're both fighting each other. This FG1 is trying to make the pulley go that way. So this is a negative. The FG2 is trying to make the pulley go this way. So it's a positive when we plug it into our formula. And I think I'm ready to plug all of that into an F net and see what the formula looks like. So I'm going to say that my net force is FG1 plus FG2 plus an applied force. And there's no frictions or anything at play here. Okay, so we know that FG1 is negative. We know that FG2 is positive. And we can actually work out our F net as well. Because F net is the total mass, M1 plus M2, times the acceleration. The total mass is 7.5 kilograms. And we know the acceleration is 0.25 meters per second squared. And so when we multiply those two together, we get 1.875 newtons. And again, if the acceleration is up, that's tending to make the pulley go in the counterclockwise direction, so that as well is negative. So I'm going to plug in these numbers into my equation and solve for FA. So F net is a negative 1.875. FG1 is negative 29.43. FG2 is a positive 44.145. And FA is what I'm solving for. So to solve for this, we're going to bring the 29 to the other side, the 44 to the other side, and have a negative 1.875 plus 29.43 minus 44.145 to get the applied force. And when we subtract those out, we should be getting a negative 16.59 newtons which should make sense that it's negative because as we said we're pushing up on the window and that is making the pulley turn in a counterclockwise direction so it should have come out as a negative number so 16.59 is the uh, force being applied to make it accelerate at the uh, acceleration of 0 0.25 meters per second squared. Okay, so last question. We're almost there. Last question has two gymnasts that each have the exact same mass, 37 kilograms, and they're dangling over opposite sides of some sort of magical, frictionless, weightless pulley. Now, if one of the gymnasts is pulling herself up the rope with an acceleration of 1 meters per second squared, the question's asking what happens to her and what happens to the other gymnast. 
Well, we know the system is going to be, uh, the acceleration is going to be equal. So if this person is pulling up with a force and they're accelerating upwards at one meters per second squared, then the other person is going to be accelerating upward at one meter per second squared as well. They're basically both going to rise up the rope at one meter per second squared, even though the other person isn't pulling up. And that's because as you're pulling up on the rope, you're running out of rope. So there's really no calculations to the question. It was just getting you to figure out and think about what happens as you pull on this pulley. Uh, you're pulling on the rope, so you're accelerating upward, and the other person's also accelerating upward. And both of them, until you reach the top of the pulley, would have uh, both have the same accelerations on the way up, uh, even though they're not doing work. So if you can convince, you're in this situation, and you convince the other person to pull for you, uh, you're going to be much better off and you can get to the top of the rope without doing any of the work. Okay, so those are three examples, uh, questions worked out for you, and hopefully you can continue to have some success with these questions.